Ready to go. Welcome guys. Welcome to another community game. This will be the last community game of the evening, sadly. But uh, it should be a good one because everybody in this game is 1800 plus. And that means that we've got the best players of the bunch here uh, on AOEHD. And uh, we should see some much better levels of play. So, yes. introducing the players, introducing the civs and the teams. Down to the south of the map, in the red, we've got the uh, the, the Slavs, Gamisha, uh, playing as the Slavs, sorry. And he's on the flank, on that left side. In the pocket position, in the purple, we've got Cox, not Glocks, playing as the Mongols. And uh, that's a wicked, wicked pocket civilization to have. Mongols absolute powerhouse of Age of Empires 2 and in the pocket position as well that's going to be really strong like like ox and uh, on the right flank in the teal we've got Adam the rabbit and he's playing as the Persians in the teal there so that's uh, the right flank so that's team number one that's some pretty nice stuff Persians and Mongols definitely top tier civs and then of course the uh, the slabs which are oh they're okay they're okay. Uh, they're certainly not too bad. Uh, one thing that all of these civilizations do very well, though, is cavalry. Uh, but it depends, you know, we'll see if we get that that far. Uh, up to the north of the map, in the green, we've got uh, Ponerto. Uh, he's playing on the left flank as the Goths. Interesting. Um, Gamisha on the left flank will be his, um, his sort of enemy over on that flank. And uh, Slabs... Infantry Civ, Infantry and Siege, and uh, Gots, of course, Infantry Civ, so that'll be interesting there. In the pocket position, we've got Plopper. We've seen him already today. Uh, you've seen me and Plopper play a couple of times. I think it's currently like 2-0, 3-0 to me. I don't even know the score. Yeah, I think it's like 3-0. Oops. Um, I probably shouldn't but play a couple of times. I think it's currently like 2-0, 3-0 to me. I don't even know the score. Yeah, I think it's like 3-0. Oops. Um... I probably shouldn't mention that. I don't think he's going to be too happy about me bringing that up. But uh, he's playing as the Ethiopians there. So one of the African Kingdom's civilizations here. And uh, I think it would be interesting. I've not seen a huge amount of African Kingdom civilizations in play at a higher level. And in a fair game, which this should be. So I'll be interested to see what he goes with here. Uh, I think the Ethiopians are an incredibly, incredibly strong civilization. Uh, cavalry with Farimba is insane. Um, Gabeto warriors countering the counters to their cavalry and then of course um that they're, they're, they're a little bit of a jack of all trades civ uh they do do everything somewhat well and i think they've got some very good unit combinations which we'll, we might see plopper bring out no. the big guns later on on the right flank in the gray we've got nellos he's playing as the aztecs which uh you know could be very very strong in these kind of games when you get a uh, fast imperial with uh, eagle warriors if we see that kind of play. I'll look at the map in a second, but first of all, I'm going to answer Crash Overdrive in the chat. He's asking, where can I get my hands on Tato's hotkeys? Uh, at the moment, I don't think he has them uploaded anywhere, but um, me and Tato are actually working on a project right now. For those of you who... Uh, wait, sorry, am I talking about Ethiopian... Ah, my... My bad. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, guys. I always get Ethiopians and Malians confused. Let me just go back to this a minute. Uh, Ethiopians, ignore me. Ignore me. No, they're not a jack-of-all-trades sieve. They are not the Malians. They don't get Farimba. They don't have amazing cavalry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Ethiopians are the archer civilization. Uh, their archers fire 15% faster. They get the Shotel warrior, not the Gabeta. They get the Shotel, which is the incredibly fast me uh, melee raiding unit, infantry unit uh, from the castle. And they get good archers and they get amazing siege. Torsion engines is their unique technology, which makes their siege do more splash damage. Uh, apologies. I totally got confused between Ethiopians and Malians there. Uh, sorry about that. But anyway, going back to what I was saying before. Um... <laughs> Oh, Mekuler. That's, uh, that's mean, man. It's mean. <clears throat> so what I was going to say is, uh, if you don't know, Tato is a top Age of Empires player. He's one of the best in the world. He is um, very, very good on Vubli. He's like top 20 on Vubli, I'd say. Maybe top 25, roughly. But he's the number one rated player on Age of Empires 2 HD. Tato is the highest rated player um, in Age of Empires 2 HD. And uh, me and Tato are working on something called the Age of Empires 2 University. Uh, I'm not going to give you too many details yet because we're, we're quite early in the process. But we're basically making a, um, 
a, a website where we are going to absolutely hammer Age of Empires 2 information and, and give a an absolutely like awesome course to learn Age of Empires. So we're talking about going from absolute beginner to a multiplayer mastermind. That's that's the aim, and it's going to be a guided learning course. You can you you start wherever your your ELO puts you, and you go through the steps. And uh, Tata is going to be writing guides with me, uh, making video content with me, and we're going to do uh, some really in-depth tutorials, uh, which will be available for you guys to check out later on. Um, so yeah, it's going to be on the zeroempires.net website, but uh, it's currently. You know, nowhere near finished. We're not ready to, to really release anything at the moment. Uh, but we're working on that. And you will be able to download Tato's hotkeys from there. So that's the plan, guys. That's the plan. It's, it's going to be a pretty big project. But it's going to be fantastic when it's done. So anyway, we want to look at this map. And uh, this map is pretty cool. Uh, we've got water around the edge. And we've watched... And we've also got a lot of deer on this map as well in the center. So this map is incredibly, incredibly food heavy. You've just got so much deer around the center. Uh, you've got loads of fish on the edge. So there's going to be no shortage of food here whatsoever. Uh, though it does look like there's not a um, huge number of boar. In fact, I'm questioning whether there's any boar in this game. I wasn't really paying attention earlier on. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be... Uh, a, a very food intensive map is also fairly open i mean each player is, is a little bit open they, everyone's open to the center of the map but the water kind of comes in so that you can wall up like this so the team on the north you can see how they're walling up kind of like in towards the center here and uh, it, generally you see this at higher level players generally kind of make kind of like a team wall and they get everyone walled in together and that way you know your enemies can't slip one by can't slip one past and uh, catch you out I, I imagine everyone's going to be doing a fast castle here though we may see a little bit of action on the water but for the majority of this game i imagine we're going to be seeing action in the center of the map that should be the uh, the main focus because the center of the map is where you've got all this extra wood. Center of the map is where you've got the extra food. And it's also easier to attack on the land than on water. It's easier to finish the game um, on the land. Because the only way you can attack from the water and do a lot of damage on land is when you get the uh, when you get the cannon galleons, which is like late post-imperial age. Uh, with galleons, you can't do that much from the water when there's so much space in the middle of the map for your enemies to build. Um, I think getting the, the land is going to be the key on this one. Uh, but getting water as well will be very good. And you can see players here at the back of the map uh, making a few fish and uh, maybe making a few military units on the water as well. The first person, person to the castle age there will be Kooner Toe. Uh, he is uh, obviously the goth player up here. And uh, I'll be interested to see what he does. Will he be throwing down a second or a third town center? Or will he be getting aggressive? Now, since he has no wood, I'm very curious. Because uh, he's got a lot of food. He's got a lot of uh, gold. But what's the plan, man? What is the plan? I'm not seeing it right now. There's no Huskars coming out. There's no champions. Not champions. No uh, long swordsmen coming out. And uh, no wood for a second TC. What we're seeing instead is a stable. Uh, it's a little late. But it looks like he's going to go straight into knights here. Now, since the... Um Goths are an infantry civilization. A lot of people look over the fact that Goths actually have really good knights. The Goths have, uh, you know, equal knights to anyone else in the game in the Castle Age. Uh, they have bloodlines. They have plus two attack. They have plus two defense. And they're actually very formidable in the Castle Age. You don't want to overcommit to the knights as the Goths. But if you do make a lot of knights and it works out well for you with raiding, you can also go for Cavalier, where they then start to drop off, because uh, they don't get Paladin, obviously. But uh, in this situation, going for knights is fine. He's also throwing in some Huskars for good measure, but I don't know, questionable choice. I guess for raiding, yes, but against the Slavs, no. Yeah, Huskars generally going to perform very badly versus the Slavs, since the Huskars are really for dealing with um, uh, archer civilizations. And the Slavs are anything but an archer sieve, really. The Mongols, though, they're, they're an archer sieve, but I don't really feel like the Mongols are going to be investing too heavily here into military at this stage, since they are going to be wanting to boom up and try and get to the Mangadai, which is their post-imperial or late-imperial kind of unit that they're going to be going for.
Uh, I missed some. I missed some questions in the chat. I'm just gonna scroll up slightly in the chat. Uh, some people, Blaze Star GG, uh, Jarvis, and Sil Davian said, uh, "Sounds like a good idea with the Age of Empires University." That's what I like to hear, guys. I, that's what I like to hear, guys. I, I'm glad you, you think so. And um, Crash Overdrive is saying, "What hotkeys should he learn?" You should learn Tato's hotkeys, but uh, I don't. There's no way to download them at the moment. They're good though. You just gotta learn them. Okay, I think that's it for questions. Like, if you if you want to ask me a question or anything, um, make sure you write my name in the message in the chat, so I'll see it. Because otherwise, I I might miss it. Uh, if you write my name, then it highlights it in red. It's easier for me to see and all that all that good stuff. Uh, on the water, then not really a huge amount of action. We do see Commission though making a little move here, and uh, War Galley's coming in going to take out some of these fishing ships. Ponato not really committed to the water at all here. In fact, I'm wondering what he's doing right now. He's made a big mistake, really, in my opinion. Uh, Huskar's just not going to be, not cutting it. Huskar's not cutting the mustard when it comes to fighting against Boyar. We saw it already. They get absolutely shredded by the Boyar there. On the plus side, he did come in, uh, deny the wall from the purple player. This is a really good wall for him, actually. That's all they need to do. Wall this, and you're sorted. Or wall that as well, but hey. Uh, purple there with that wall. He's going to get a little bit raided by these uh, Huskulls, but he's thrown up a stable. Should be able to very easily uh, make a couple of knights and defend. But really, Gamisha should be sending the Boyar over. Uh, Purple should exit. He'd be like, X here. Uh, on his, you know, using the flare thing. Flare it. Red sends his Boyar over and shreds the Huskulls up into a fine pulp. <laughs> Uh, love you, Zach. That, that's not a question, I don't think. I mean, unless you're asking me if, if you love me, and that's... Yeah, it's kind of subjective, I guess. Uh, thank you, then. <laughs> uh, Boyar, uh, Heckbounds, triple six, asking what Boyar are good at. Boyar are very good versus cavalry and infantry. Um, yes. Less so against Halberdier, since they're mounted. But they're... The, the, look at the, the stats here. They have five... Uh, sorry, four play armor on Boyar right there. They are going to be insane versus Huskarls. Boyar are so good versus Huskarls because Huskarls have no melee armor and uh, they have pretty low health in comparison as well. And they also have a lower attack. So Boyar, very, very good. Um, think of like an elite Teutonic Knight on a horse. That's how they're described. And, um, you know, great for killing champions, great for killing things like Woad Raiders, great for killing Bowie, uh, sorry, for killing um, knights. Because I think in a 1v1, the, the Boyar will, will beat a knight since it has more melee armor. It has double the melee armor of a knight. And um, as long as the slabs get bloodlines, which I'm pretty sure they get, maybe may be mistaken here. Uh, yeah, as long as they get bloodlines, they're going to have the same HP as a knight as well. So I think the, uh, the, the Boyar is very good versus cavalry too. They're kind of like a paladin killer as well. Uh, anyway, uh, I didn't really pay much attention to the right side of the map because I'm a terrible person. Uh, but we got Plopper making some show tells here. This is, of course, the um, unique unit of the Ethiopians. Uh, considering the Ethiopians are an archer sieve, I rarely see them making archers. I think they need to be reclassified because the Ethiopians are amazing at siege and they're amazing at, sh uh, at this, the show tell warriors, which is infantry. Uh, these units are so good. Like I, I don't know. I mean, people think they're overrated. Some people think they're underrated. Personally, I think they're insane. Um, they can tear down TCs incredibly quickly once you've got arson research, which is the new barracks technology that gives your infantry bonus attack versus buildings. And... Um, yeah, they're just they're good at raiding villagers. You don't really want to use these to fight knights, but if you've got good numbers, then their sheer amount of DPS, 16 attack damage, without any upgrades here, uh, and they do attack very quickly, they, they, they can take battles as long as the numbers are on their side. They can they can crush everything. Um, even, even like crossbows, provided that they've got the advantage in numbers, they can win. If your opponent doesn't have the advantage in numbers, they can win. If your opponent doesn't micro, that is. Uh, I'm missing a few things in the, in the chat here. Um, let's see. Uh, haven't seen Star Wars yet, and if no, am I going to? No, I, I probably won't go and see Star Wars, to be honest with you. Uh, I've not seen any of the other films, and it's not something that really appeals to me that much. 
Uh, I do like sci-fi, but I, I just never got around to watching Star Wars, and I, you know, I think maybe I should. Maybe I should. I, I, I hear good things about it all the time, and I feel like I'm a bit out of the loop, so I should definitely check it out. Uh, Plopper here, they're using these show tiles to massacre those villagers very, very quickly, and, um, you know, it's a good job Teal's kind of walled up, but there is always a hole, and there's a hole between these two houses. If Plopper comes in here, if he abuses the hole, if he sends his army through the hole, he could kill a bunch of villas back here pretty quickly. It only takes, like, two hits from the show tiles, uh, sorry, three hits from the show tells to kill uh, a villager I think yeah it's three hits to kill the villager which is pretty nutty if you ask me uh, scrolling down in the chat here furious official asked me uh, do you think it's good to specialize on only one military uh, like making only cavalry or only infantry 